The James Webb Telescope is shaking our established assumptions. Webb has already detected a whole series of galaxies that are much too large and massive for their early formation. This raises a crucial question. If we had already erred in our models of early galaxy evolution, could we have misunderstood the beginning of the universe as well? Although the Big Bang theory has long been accepted, it is currently coming under increasing criticism. So, it's possible that the Big Bang was not the beginning of everything after all? That it was by no means the cosmic starting signal, but simply one of an infinite number of transitions? In this context, the next intriguing question is not far off. What actually existed before the Big Bang? Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state, then nearly 14 billion years ago, expansion started. Not only fans of the cult nerd sitcom The Big Bang Theory know how the birth of the cosmos took place according to our current understanding. The often cited Big Bang describes the event in which space, time, and matter emerged from an original singularity about 13.8 billion years ago, paving the way for everything that once was, is today, and will be in the future. So far, so generally assumed. But how can we possibly know today what happened no less than 13.8 billion years ago? Well, it's quite simple. By looking backwards at a development that began with the Big Bang and continues to this day. As is well known, the cosmos is by no means a rigid, unchanging entity, but a construct that has been expanding incessantly since the moment of its creation. For a better understanding, it should be mentioned at this point that the universe is not expanding into an existing space. No, it is rather space itself that is constantly growing. And if we now trace back the expansion of the universe in time with the help of Einstein's general theory of relativity, we eventually arrive at a point where the density of matter and energy is infinite and all spatial distances are zero. So we have counted back to the hot, dense state from the Big Bang Theory intro. However, the theoretical calculations are not the only thing that has helped the Big Bang Theory to its now prominent position. Because in fact, there is also the cosmic background radiation. This is a radiation in the microwave range that was created about 380,000 years after the birth of the cosmos, and which still fills the entire universe today. And since the said radiation was theoretically predicted in the standard model, its actual detection is considered essential evidence for the Big Bang Theory. But despite all the mathematical models and found radiation relics, we must not forget that the Big Bang also raises more questions than it answers in other respects. According to our understanding, the primal universe must have experienced the first major growth spurt in fractions of a second, and expanded by a factor of 10 to the power of 30 to 10 to the power of 100 in this ridiculously short period of time. However, how exactly this so-called cosmic inflation occurred, and whether it really occurred, is just as unclear as the following question. Was there something before the Big Bang? In fact, the Big Bang theory alone is not able to solve all cosmic mysteries. For example, there is the question of what actually happened in the background of the cosmic birth. In other words, what led to something suddenly emerging out of nothing 13.8 billion years ago? Was there a trigger for it, or was it pure coincidence? And how can matter arise out of nothing at all? Well, Stephen Hawking approached this complex topic in a way that was both simple and logical. The genius, who died in 2018, was quoted as follows. The question of what was before the Big Bang is just as pointless as asking which is north of the North Pole. Because time itself only began with the Big Bang. This is an event that cannot have been caused by anything or anyone. The laws of nature themselves tell us that the universe can have come into being without the need for energy or a cause. However, other researchers have their problems with precisely this assumption, but more on that in a moment. No less controversial is the question of why matter and radiation are so evenly distributed in the cosmos. No matter in which direction or at which distance we look, on a large scale, galaxies, gas nebulae, and radiation always show similar densities and distributions. 
The current explanations point to cosmic inflation at this point, but some experts put forward the thesis that this process actually continues to this day and that a multitude of parallel worlds has formed in the process. The Big Bounce Theory As a small interim conclusion, it can be said that despite its general recognition, the Big Bang is anything but uncontroversial, and that we are still far from having fully deciphered its background. And so it happens that over time some alternatives have emerged that try to explain the question of the cosmic beginning in a completely different way. And even if the corresponding theories sometimes differ drastically from one another, they still share a fundamental commonality. We have to abandon the idea that the Big Bang was the beginning of everything. If there was another universe before the Big Bang, the Big Bang was merely the explosive transition from one cosmos to the next, and it would therefore be better described as the Big Bounce. But what exactly does that mean? Are there any tangible clues that support the existence of such a cyclical universe? Well, in principle, the idea of the interplay between destruction and rebirth is anything but new. The early Indian Vedas, for example, describe the cosmos as a sequence of creation, destruction, and recreation that repeats itself forever. The Maya had a very similar worldview, and Einstein himself spent some time considering the idea of an oscillating cyclical universe and thought it was quite plausible. In line with the motto, what expands can also contract again, cyclic models are still quite popular in cosmology today. This is hardly surprising, since this approach is able to circumvent the problem of causes. If matter has always existed in an eternal cycle, the question of how something can arise out of nothing is also no longer relevant. In such a context, there has simply never been such a thing as an absolute nothing. And in this case, the strange uniformity of the universe could also be explained by cosmic contraction, which distributes practically everything equally. The trigger for the Big Bang would be just as easy to find. It was simply the end of the previous cycle, which was followed by a new phase of expansion. So everything could be so simple if it weren't for the problem of entropy. According to the second law of thermodynamics, the degree of disorder in a closed system always increases, and this also applies to the universe. As a result of the ever-new cycles, entropy would therefore have to increase forever. This means that with each cosmic new beginning, a little more radiation is created in relation to matter, and that the cosmos will eventually reach a state of maximum entropy in which neither atoms, nor stars or galaxies can exist. But that's not all. As a result of the entropy problem, more and more disordered particles would be squeezed together with each contraction of the universe, while the following new beginning would be accompanied by a stronger dispersal. Conversely, this means nothing other than that each new cycle would always last a little longer than the previous one. In relation to the past, however, this would also mean that the cycles are getting shorter and shorter the further back we look. And just as with the Big Bang Theory, we would also arrive at a starting point where everything is concentrated. The Forgetfulness of the Universe So can we now file the cyclic models away? After all, the corresponding theories explicitly exclude a primeval beginning of everything. Well we shouldn't dismiss the idea of an eternal cycle quite so quickly. In fact, scientists have now found a way to solve the entropy problem, and all it takes is a cosmos suffering from a severe form of memory loss. To understand what this means, we have to take a brief detour into the world of loop quantum gravity. According to this theory, and contrary to Einstein's assumptions, the fabric of space-time is not continuous but is instead divided into tiny indivisible units. The eponymous loops have an extent of 10 to the power of minus 35 meters, which in turn corresponds to the Planck length and thus the smallest possible unit of quantum theory. Collectively, the interconnected loops form the basic structure of the cosmos, with the particles representing the nodes of the net-like construct. In this way, we can imagine the universe as a single wafting of constantly changing tiny connections that are neither visible nor tangible to us. In this context, 
The original singularity of the universe cannot have existed. Loop quantum gravity only allows for finite physical values, which means that an infinite density is not permissible. In the same breath, however, the quantization then causes an event that is no less spectacular. At the point of the Big Bang, gravity is reversed. Instead of exerting an attractive force as usual, it suddenly pushes everything away. As a result, space is practically turned inside out, which in turn has some astonishing consequences. Accordingly, the loop model literally screams that the Big Bang was not the beginning of everything. In contrast to the theory of relativity, it also yields valid mathematical results before the Big Bang. So, there could really be a Big Bounce, in which a precursor universe collapses in on itself and is then pushed back into larger scales by the anti-gravitational effect of its own microscopic network. Conveniently, the resulting fluctuations in matter and energy density would erase all information from the previous cosmos. In other words, every new universe suffers from a severe case of memory loss, which consequently also provides a solution to the problem of entropy. Since it is virtually reset to zero, the universe can cut off its old entropy braids and start over carefree. And now, feel free to start hitting the like and subscribe buttons Become a part of our community and never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.